Okay, welcome to the Global Migrant Festival. Um, I'm the chair of this session today. My name is Wiebke Sievers. I'm a senior scientist at the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Vienna, and I'm a guest researcher and teacher at the Department for German Jewish Literature and Cultural History, Exile and Migration at the European University Viadrina in Frankfurt Oder in Germany. Um, my res main research interests are migration and culture, and I'm very happy to chair this first session of the panel that is called Intertwining Research and Arts in Migration Studies, Experiences from the Field. Now, this panel is part of the activities of the Standing Committee Difficult, which is the abbreviation for Superdiversity, Migration and Cultural Change, and this is a standing committee of the International Research Network in Moscow. And I recommend that you all have a look at the website of this research network and of the standing committee, because all researchers are welcome to join in our work. And I could co coordinate this with Marco Martiniello, who will chair the next session. I'm very happy uh, to chair this first session that deals with um, migration and theater, migration and performing arts in uh, Belgium and France. And I'm happy to introduce uh, our four speakers who will present two papers today. Um, the first is by Basil Adoum and Laila Deep on the artistic participation of Syrian refugees in Belgium. Um, Basil Adoum is the, I hope I pronounced that correctly, is the director and Laila Dib is a member of the theater group Refugees Are Not Alone, Rana, and this will also be the topic of the paper today. Basil Adoum is currently a PhD candidate at CEDEM, the Center for Ethnic and Migration Studies uh, in Liège, and he holds a, a master's in English literature from the Freie Universität in Brussels in Belgium that focused on racial discrimination, identity, home and belonging in modern England, as depicted by Carol Phillips in his fiction. And the second speaker is Lila Dipp. She is a software engineer based in Brussels, working with the Synergist. Um, and she's driving digital products development through collaborating with cross-functional teams. Uh, she has also a sincere interest in exploring and educating tech topics, also to empower women. And LIDA is part of the Brussels Binder, an online database for female policy experts in Brussels. And she has also started her own YouTube channel called Let's Talk Technology in 2019 and aims to start a new initiative to support women in tech in Syria. So these are the first two speakers. I'll also re uh, introduce the second speakers, Amanda de Silva and Anthony Lefebvre. And they will speak on the art to talk on migration state of emergency project. Amanda de Silva is the artistic director and Anthony Lefebvre is a co-founder of the state of emergency project. And this is a performing arts project focused on migration, which brings together researchers, civil society actors, migrants and artists. And their first show, Tell My Mother That I'm Here, was the winner of a Tridanzi 2016 and it was considered a human experience between arts and sciences on the situation of refugees. And the two will speak about this particular project. Amanda de Silva is a PhD candidate, candidate in political and social sciences at the Center for Ethnic and Migration Studies, the CEDEM in Liège. Uh, she holds a master degree in international migrations and another one in international relations. And her research interests are mig migrant mobility, solidarity and humanitarianism, refugee camps, mobilization of civil society actors, cultural participation of migrants and cultural mediation. And Anthony Lefebvre is an acrobat, a contemporary dancer and a clown. And he has worked with many well-known artists and I'll not name them all because there were so many in the list. Um, uh, including in dance with Joël Bouvier and as a clown with Joël Collas and Jacques Mott. He has been active in the world of street theater and after a three year international tour with the company Off, he created an acrobatic duo that is called Le Reste On en Reparlera in 2011 within the company Osmond. And he continues in his research in urban space with Oops from the company Jordi Vidal. So thank you very much to all the speakers and I look forward to hearing your papers and I give the word to Basil Adum and Laila Deep. Thank you. Uh, thank you Professor Sievers for the nice words and uh, 
Thank you to the team, uh, to Teamwork, for organizing this festival and uh, the highly needed team of discussion that is actually art, migration, and research. I would like to, if possible, share uh, <clears throat> my screen. Thank you uh, for the presentation and thank you for uh, organizing uh, this panel about the theme of discussion that's uh, art, migration, and research. Uh, regarding the uh, art and migration studies, the number of research about the relation between art and immigration is surprisingly low, especially when considering the richness of artistic expression in immigrant communities and their impact on the host culture. Furthermore, uh, immigrants have been exclusively considered as workers. They were not, I'm quoting, supposed to be politically active, even less were they expected to be interested in culture and arts, especially not as artists." End quote. Most cultural studies approaches have developed simplistic views about the social relevance of minority, cultural and artistic forms of expression in post-migration cities. Issues such as multiculturalism and interculturalism of uh, cultural institutions and its role in cultural dialogue and cohesion have not been sufficiently investigated in academia. Furthermore, from one direction, the influence of integration policies on artistic and cultural inclusion, and from the other direction, uh, the influence of art and cultural production on integration policies is also worth studying. Now, what is the role or importance of art for migrants? Often lacking necessary linguistic skills and social conventions of the adopted countries, and most importantly, the platform, immigrants resort to aesthetic means to communicate with the wider society, to assert dignity and to claim national membership. Art serves a variety of functions for the migrant men and women who create and consume them. For example, providing the comfort of familiarity, interpreting personal experience, communicating about the old world to the young, bringing immigrants together, representing themselves to the host country and affirming public as well as private identities. Art allows for a kind of freedom not found in other forms of communication. And because the immigrant condition is often restrictive in receiving areas, art enables immigrants to break across boundaries through the use of their imagination. Now, how did this idea come to life? I will leave the floor to Leila to speak about this point. So yeah, as, uh, uh, thank you everyone for, uh, for having us here. Uh, as Basel uh, finished with uh, migration, we are all aware of the asylum experience of the Syrian refugees. Uh, we, we all heard about the, the death boats. We know the struggle of the refugees to arrive to a place of safety and dignity. But what we realize is that there's uh, a big part of production about the war itself, about the journey uh, of the refugees, but there are we don't see a lot of art uh, about the settlement, about what happens after the refugees uh, when they come to the asylum place, either Belgium or Germany or any place where they refuge. Uh, we don't see how the refugees struggle daily to belong in this new surrounding. So we thought, why not use what people enjoy the most, which is art in shedding the light on this part of, this, uh, of their experience. Uh, the idea of this, uh, uh, this play started with a bit of humor and funny incidences between me and Basel and some other friends. Uh, we were thinking about our daily routines and how the differences between uh, uh, our lives in our original countries and our lives here in, uh, in Belgium. And we formed this uh, bit idea. Uh, Basel thought that we can use that to show the daily life uh, of the Syrian immigrants uh, in Brussels, and he brought that idea to Rana Group uh, as part of their project, Welcome at My Home. And because we shared the values with that project and the, uh, our idea, uh, which is shedding the light of uh, the refugees' daily life, 
uh, the, the, the project was accept accepted and adopted by that project, uh, by this um, uh, RANA group. And uh, now, okay, I'm sure you're thinking, what's the play? What is it about? Uh, our play talks about a family that moved to Belgium uh, from uh, of the first wave of migration in Syria around uh, 2010, 2011. And uh, this small family consists of uh, uh, the main character, which is the mom. And this is the role that uh, I play in this, uh, in this uh, play. And then the father and two daughters. Uh, one of the daughters was born in Syria and the other daughter uh, was born in Syria and uh, lived, grew up in Belgium. And the other daughter was born and raised in Belgium. To see here the differences between growing up in one place and then moving to, uh, to another place. And in the play, we show the interaction between uh, uh, the family with each other, with the mom and the dad and the, uh, the two daughters. And also we show the interaction with the, uh, between the family and the Belgian society and vice versa. And this is one of the main themes of the play uh, that we are uh, working on. Uh, I'll let Basel continue with uh, the, the other themes of the play. Thank you, Leila. The play touches upon the themes of identity. From one side, the parents who are not able to leave behind their identity, and uh, the other side, the children who navigate the world without a clear vision of who they are. Secondly, belonging, mainly for the second generation and 1.5 generation who feel or do not feel Belgians, and the whole society who considers or doesn't consider them as full citizens. Thirdly, generational conflict among the family members. And finally, gaps in integration policies that do not consider the importance and the full potential of the role of mother in the process of social cohesion. Now for the process of creation or creating this project, I will uh, leave the floor again to Leila. Uh, so I worked uh, uh, to, to create this um, uh, display. I was with Basel when, when he first started uh, writing it. Uh, we started conducting formal and informal interviews and discussions with migrants, uh, artists and non-artists from different backgrounds. And then uh, Basel arrived to define patterns and themes that are the, uh, and phrases that are recurrent in these discussions. He kind of like used them and wove them with the stories that has been told during these interviews and discussions uh, uh, to create this traumatized uh, ethnography. And correct me if I'm wrong, Basel, with the right term. Yes, the right term is ethnodrama. Yeah, with, the, yeah. With, with ethnodrama. So with conducting these, uh, uh, these interviews. Uh, and as a team now, a team of the play, we are a young gender equal team. We are coming from uh, different professional backgrounds. Uh, some of us has literature background. Some of them like me uh, have IT background. Uh, some of them media and marketing. Uh, so we're like a very diverse team. And uh, we, uh, on top of that, we're not all Syrians. Uh, we are from uh, Jordan, uh, from Lebanon, Iraq, Palestine. Uh, so we're adding this diversity to the uh, to the to the play because each of us brings their own experience and their own uh, um, creativity. And at the same time, we share the background of uh, leaving our original place and coming to uh, immigrate to a new place. And this is the this is the team uh, uh, that's working on the play. Now, uh, the last point that I want to, uh, to add to what Leila has just said is among Syrian communities in diaspora, the label and recognition is a debatable topic. There is a conflict among artists, whether to be addressed or presented as artist and then refugee, or refugee and then followed by artist. We do not have this issue in mind. We are a group of young people in diaspora we're planning to offer access to a family's household in a natural context through artistic performance. As you can see in the short videos we have shared with you, due to COVID-19 safety measures, we were obliged to do the rehearsals in the open air, parks, friend's house, the terrace of Leila's place, for example, etc. The question of dropping the idea altogether or postponing it was off the table. Here we are not speaking artist and artist, rather we are a group 
we have a message, we want to deliver this message, and we want to find out what this project will add to academia. Thank you for listening. Mom, that is look good on me. Yes, mm -hmm. looks nice. But you're not looking. Look at me. It looks beautiful. What about the sky? You look beautiful, Fatima. So it will look nice outside? Yes, it will look nice. Thank you. Stop jumping around like monkeys. It's called art. Why are you crying, Fatima? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Tell me. My friend had a party on Sunday and no one invited me. And my dad is angry on me because she said I can sleep over and I said I can. But I told you you can invite her for a sleepover at our place. And I can cook Syrian food for you. Have you talked to dad about the school scout? Yes, I talked to him. But we were really worried about you. We didn't know what's that and where you're going to sleep. And you know, in Italy, oh, we didn't no. have any scouts. And we were just worried about you. You know, I wish if it was me that was it, not Ahmed. Allah took a baby to relieve him from this disgusting life. It's in Netherlands. Why are you speaking in this language? Nothing. Don't talk to me from behind the walls. Walls behind walls behind walls. Everywhere I go, there's walls. Everywhere, everywhere I go, there walls. I cannot speak, I cannot say anything from behind these walls. I feel like I'm suffocating. And in Syria, the walls have ears. Cannot do this anymore. I'm suffocating. Thank you. Why don't they like me? See, I put all the filters that they put on Instagram. And and I post all the things about Charlie Abdullah and all that stuff. Is it because I haven't posted about that life matters yet? Thank you very much to Basela Doom and Laila Deep for their presentation. And I hand or give the floor now to Amanda and Anthony for their presentation. Thank you, Ibke. Uh, we are very proud to be here to, to, to talk, to speak about this project. Uh, we, uh, we do uh, size 2014, actually. And uh, I, I don't have a PowerPoint. We decided to just have a discussion and, and talk about the project, uh, how it was, uh, the ideas uh, we had, uh, how it is, uh, how we, the results we had also. So uh, the uh, State of Emergency uh, project uh, started in 2014, actually. We started to work really in 2015. And uh, the idea came from the desire, actually, uh, to, to deconstruct some stereotypes uh, linked to migrants living in camps in the north of France. Uh, they constructed this uh, and also uh, a way uh, to ex, you know, um, a way to explore other uh, forms of communication uh, between a research researcher and the society. So beyond uh, university walls, beyond academia, uh, I think it was very important uh, in that time for me uh, try to explore other ways, other codes to communicate with civil society, with neighborhoods, with uh, uh, civil society actors also, and share with them. Of course, I was very, very inspired by uh, the idea of Martinello about art as a way to construct a bridge between different social groups. And uh, of course, because of the potential of arts, you know, as emotional uh, dimension of arts that, uh, you know, uh, go beyond uh, linguistic codes. So it, the idea of the project was uh, communicate by performative arts uh share with uh, people uh, uh, and uh, 
deconstruct also some stereotypes. Because in that time, we need to remember also 2015, uh, we had a lot of images and a lot of uh, artistic productions also that go in that direction, you know, a lot of victimization of migrants. We have a lot of uh, um, um, securitizing uh, political speech is also. So migrants had always that dimension as very, very present in society. It's almost the same today, I need to say, regarding that migrants in Calais in France. But uh, that uh, dimension of uh, victimization and also as migrants as dangerous, uh, it was something that I would like to deconstruct by arts, by performative arts, you know. So uh, the idea was co-construct uh, this uh, show, uh, uh, Tell to my mother that I am here, with professional artists, because it was also very important uh, to us to, to create something that could circulate in the art worlds, you know, uh, give also to migrants this space, give to 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 to, to people that are not always, uh, you know, very welcome in the theater, because in France is very elitized space, so. Uh, we had uh, this this uh, desire to 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 do also a lot of cultural mediation uh, to to invite people to reappropriate itself of this space cultural space actually so it was very important to work with professional artists so we have uh, my, uh, migrants that work and and the project but because it's an exceptional uh, artist actually uh, not because he's a migrant because he's a very, very important artist. And uh, it, uh, it was also important that don't go in that direction, you know, uh, just uh, include migrants, uh, on, put migrants on the stage just because they are migrants, uh, to, you know, it was uh, important for us. So, uh, but, it was very interesting in the cultural industry as in France, see a lot of this uh, arts on migration circulate in very, um, you know, uh, translated and reproduce some stereotypes. Uh, we, uh, the, the, um, the research, the ethnography, it was the way that we find to go beyond it, you know, to include ethnography in artistic creation, we could, uh, you know, um, create uh, spaces and moments of interaction between artists and migrants. Uh, they do uh, field work, observation. We do a lot of focus groups. We work a lot with positionality of artists. That is very important. Uh, and uh, all this, uh, these tools were employed to the creation, actually. We work with dancers, acrobats. We privilege the, to show the body and the expression, the physical expression also. Uh, and um, the, the, the result was, was the show, uh, actually. And um, also, uh, not only the show, but all, all, uh, all tools, the tools that we, we create as workshops, for example, that, uh, that we do uh, um, in the theaters. And uh, yes, um, I, I would like to, to let Anthony talk a bit about, uh, about his experience as an artist working in that project. Uh, I'm just before I need to stress that uh, we spend time in the camps of Calais with artists. Uh, so uh, they meet uh, migrants, they share uh, experience, sing, dance uh, all together. They do uh, some directive interviews also uh, with them and you do uh, between the artists and all during all the, the project. So we spend uh, two years to conclude uh, a lot of uh, focus group uh, to to you know to to understand the situation and to have the different perspectives of the experiences they had uh, in the field. Okay, so Anthony, yeah. do you want to? 
Um, so my, my point of view about this creation, um, that's the first time that we could do uh, ethnographic process uh, in the same time of uh, preparing a show. And we, we, we meet, of course, a lot of migrants and we converse a lot. And it's like a, a sensation to give uh, my body for there um, to express what I see, what I felt. Uh, and so what was a, a creation process that for me tra transform my vision of art, my vision of dance or, or of acrobatics, because it's it just not my perception of the world that I could express. It's the perception of people that I met, really. Uh, even the camp situation, of course, that, that is it's not a fine situation, but okay. Uh, we, we, we pass a long time to search uh, with our body how uh, express uh, the, the feelings that you see when you see people, how you can give your body for their speech, um, or how you can dance to express uh, suffering. suffering or happiness, happiness that uh, people uh, really lived in front of us or with us. So for, for me, transform really my conception of uh, doing show. And because it's some incredible experiences that uh, remove all your your conception, your all your mind of art. Yeah, um, yeah. I I I need to, to just to to stress that uh, when he said also uh, about. Um, uh, give uh, tra translate yes what was, what uh, was very very important translate the feeling the the experience of meeting actually the other important thing uh, and uh, it it was uh, we are not worried we don't want to represent uh, um, migrants but that meeting with people it was the idea also to to use ethnography as a, a experience that artists will uh, uh, use to create so uh, <clears throat> as we we call in france a kind of lâcher prise is a, a to to help them to 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 you know by leaving the situation they can after uh, use it that feeling to express themselves and it was very interesting because uh, the the legitimacy of artists was something that we discussed a lot in doing this project and in the end of uh, the project actually we we decided that the most important thing was tell people that we met that person and put names in that person, give them back the eye, you know, they, uh, you know, in the same time, artists are also being themselves saying, I met that person, you know, so uh, we are not going to represent or uh, uh, reproduce their uh, words, their speech, but the, uh, how that meeting, that connection could influence artists' perception. It was more about it. Ils sont pas venus ici pour chercher le bonheur. Ils sont venus ici parce qu'ils ont perdu le leur. Ils étaient heureux en Syrie. Ils étaient heureux au Soudan. À un moment donné, ça a mal tourné et ils ont perdu le bonheur qu'ils avaient. Ils ne viennent pas en Europe pour chercher le bonheur que nous, que nous on pourrait prétendre avoir. Non. Ils viennent ici parce qu'ils ont perdu le bonheur qu'ils avaient déjà.
À l'arrivée en France pour mériter ta place en foyer, il faut tout raconter, c'est la procédure. En moins de deux heures. Alpha, essaie de répondre aux questions, ça nous aidera pour la rédaction de tes déclarations. Le Sahara, combien de temps euh, Sahara, cinq jours en 4x4 avec les passeurs Touareg. La Libye la Libye, euh, dix jours euh, dans un ghetto, en attendant le feu vert du passeur. Et la Méditerranée, deux jours en bateau, puis quelques heures sur le bateau des gardes-côtes italiens venus en sauvetage. Et l'Italie, euh, l'Italie, 15 jours dans un foyer d'accueil pour migrants. Ok, c'est noté, mais dis donc, au fait, il est où ton ami qui faisait le voyage avec toi Il y a deux personnes qui se sont noyées devant la traversée. L'une des deux, c'était lui. Ah, désolé. Pourquoi tu ne nous l'as pas dit avant Tu n'avais pas envie d'en parler Oh non, non, c'est pas ça. Vous m'avez dit de répondre à vos questions, non Oui. Bah, vous ne m'avez pas posé cette question. J'ai rencontré Hassan à Calais. Hassan, il avait 18 ans. Hassan, il venait du Soudan. Il pleuvait dehors. Hassan, il nous a invités dans sa tente pour boire un thé. Nous étions dix serrés les uns contre les autres. On a beaucoup parlé avec Hassan. Et puis on a chanté aussi. On a échangé nos hymnes nationaux. Nous, on a chanté l'international et ça l'a fait beaucoup rire. Et puis on est souvent revenu voir Hassan. Un jour, il n'était plus là. I came here. I came here for what? Did I lost my father, or my mother, or my family, or my country, or my wishes, or my dream. I moved in the, the sea of the world for nothing. If you think about me, I, an illegal person, you have no money, you have no document. For sure, man, you are in the near the station, and afraid of the police. Train come. Waiting and waiting. I accepted jumping. No, it's not easy. One police told me, you are not crazy, you are crazy. I told you, we are crazy. You know, when I came outside of the camp, you know, when I, I thought, I'm free, really. I, I was full. I couldn't take breath. Really take a person. No? I thought it's I will die. But I really go outside in the front in the main door of the camp. I thought I'm free. I realized it, there is nothing changed, you know. I didn't got anything, but I thought I'm free. My I I I got it. My face is fresh. You know? I got this the energy in my body. I play as a it's a baby on the beach. I lay down and play and laugh and cry and everything. And I stay in one place, look at this. It's only a small play distance. You are another side. For a short minute, change everything. You know, it's a horrible feeling, you know. When you see, it's, it's stay there another side and look, it's there, do it over. You can see it. It's not only over for me that time. I stay here and I accept it, accept it, everything, and there is no future. If I cross, maybe, maybe I got it.
le barbelé déchire les mémoires et les chairs, le barbelé dispositif d'exclusion et d'élimination, délimitation du dehors et du dedans, droit à vivre, condamnation à mourir, être à l'intérieur du camp, se dépouiller de sa mémoire, de son passé, de son, de son identité, accepter sans jamais comprendre, accepter de n'être plus qu'un chiffre, dépouillé de toute humanité, du côté de la bête et de l'ordure, barbelé symbole de la violence politique, vidéosurveillance, portail électronique, résidence sécurisée, mur et barbelé, balafre l'espace, scinde d'ici et l'ailleurs, le même et l'autre. Au Sahara occidental, le mur de sable, 2400 km, gardé par 100 000 soldats marocains. À Chypre, le nord et le sud, séparés par 180 km de barbelé, de la Bulgarie à la Manche, le long de la frontière entre la Hongrie et la Serbie, 175 km. Clôture, symbole de l'Europe forteresse, une triple rangée de grillages de 6 mètres de haut pour 11,5 km de long à Melilla, Mirador, caméra thermique et un mur de barbelés anti-migrants. 4,5 millions d'euros séparent la Bulgarie de la Turquie, haut de 3 mètres et long de 30 km. Policiers, chasseurs de frontières accompagnés de chiens et d'hélicoptères, déploiement de l'armée entre la Hongrie et la Serbie. À Calais, détecteurs infrarouges, projecteurs lumineux, double clôture, 3 km de long, 2 à 4 mètres de haut. Nos frontières sont sûres, disent nos ministres. Murs et barbelés anti-immigration, ghetto anti terrorisme, barrières économiques internes, zone de conflit, antitrafic de drogue, contrôle des circulations, mur de la honte. Mur qui sépare le monde, le scarifie, le défigure. Solution primaire, fait dans l'urgence pour la plupart par des états démocratiques. 65 murs construits et planifiés, soit 40 000 km de long ou la circonférence de la terre. Attention, votre frontière, pas sur cette limite, on tire. L'autre devenu proie à abattre, frontière des exclus, des errants et des damnés qui s'obstinent à vouloir traverser, franchir, passer de l'autre côté, marcher, passer, traverser. Je considère la place de l'art et de l'artiste comme étant quelqu'un qui travaille sur une vision politique de la société, et pas autrement. Je me suis toujours placée comme individu et pas comme danseuse par rapport à des projets, parce que finalement, tu te construis et tu et apprends avec ce que tu es en train de faire, tu apprends avec ce que tu as sous la main. Je m'appelle Amanda Da Silva, je suis chercheuse en migration dans le Centre des études d'ethnicité et d'immigration de Liège. Et euh, j'ai commencé à chercher, euh, à, à développer des recherches dans, euh, dans le nord de la France en 2012 sur la question de, des réfugiés et migrants qui sont dans les camps de nord de la France. Après, une fois que je suis partie, je me suis posé une question, c'était euh, alors, ces, ces recherches-là, Comment je pourrais euh, les, les transmettre au grand public Comment euh, je pourrais les rendre accessibles On peut utiliser l'art vivante, la culture, les expressions artistiques pour construire des passerelles entre le monde universitaire, le monde de la recherche, et euh, les citoyens. Le projet État d'urgence est né de cette idée-là. Et c'est là qui précisément un groupe d'artistes, de euh, acrobates, de danseurs, un euh, plasticien, un dramaturge se sont euh, réunis. Ils sont partis dans les camps avec moi, ils ont fait un peu d'ethnographie. On a bossé pendant un an ensemble et on est là aujourd'hui euh, en train de construire cet spectacle aussi. Et ce euh, projet euh, avec... Euh, des chercheurs, des artistes. Alors en fait, euh, en, en ayant été pas mal avec, euh, avec les migrants là, 
bah, comment ils réagissent par rapport à ça Enfin, ça doit être complètement hallucinant, quoi. Les mecs, ils arrivent, ils sont sur un port, il y a un tunnel, ils peuvent pas passer. Enfin, tu vois, au niveau culturel, c'est quand même très différent, quoi. Leur culture et la nôtre. Et quand ils arrivent, ils sont confrontés là et qu'on les refoule, comment ils, comment ils interprètent Je conçois pas du tout, enfin, je, je conçois pas mon engagement comme une aide. Euh, C'est d'une part une situation qui est inacceptable par le niveau de violence qu'on fait subir à des gens. Euh, et d'autre part, c'est une situation d'exclusion d'une population dans notre société qui ne se retrouve pas seulement à Calais, même si là, elle est concentrée, elle est plus visible, euh, et qui pose la question dans quelle société euh, on veut vivre, et vers où, euh, de manière dominante, notre société est en train d'évoluer. Et je pense qu'au stade où on en est, on n'a pas le choix, quelque part. C'est vraiment nous que ça engage et le monde dans lequel on veut vivre. Et que la question n'est pas d'aider, c'est aussi... Euh, c'est aussi de construire un, un monde où, on puisse, où ce genre de situation de violence, si possible, n'existe pas et, et où les gens venus d'ailleurs soient traités avec un minimum de, de dignité, où la rencontre soit possible avec eux, où l'enrichissement mutuel soit possible avec eux. Et ce n'est pas la société qui se construit actuellement, mais c'est aussi une société dans laquelle on puisse défendre ses opinions sans avoir une fichesse à partir du moment où on affiche une certaine radicalité, parce que c'est aussi une question qui se pose pour un certain nombre d'entre eux. باوكم خوشكا كان يعني هم بيانا خوش وزور بيري بزور بيري نجيش ندا كم هم زار نجيش ندا انشتين كباوكم من لا مليش شكيواتم سار سين بو هم زار ندا انشتين باوكم كا نان ما اندخوار بيانيا كي جيشنا باوكم
Um, so I, what I would like to do really is first of all ask you a question about uh, the reception of your work because I, I really enjoyed both of the presentations and about the, the work you were talking about but how what is the answer of the audiences how do the audiences react to what you're doing um, are they happy with especially those who are migrants and those who are refugees themselves are they happy with what you're doing uh, in your work Perhaps Basel and Laila, you start, and then Amanda and Anthony. Is that okay? <clears throat> okay. For uh, for us, our work is uh, in progress. Uh, we uh, we haven't uh, staged our work yet, but uh, the reception of the the volunteers or people uh, who, who we are, with whom we are sharing this uh, this idea and this project is uh, really really positive. We have a, a large team of volunteers. Sometimes we have. Uh, people in the in the workplace that uh, I think uh, I think we have more people than we can than we can uh, manage especially during these days so uh, uh, the uh, organizations that uh, I am in contact with they are also uh, uh, having a very positive uh, reaction we received offers of three uh, uh, theater uh, houses to uh, to host us and to that we can uh, how to say uh, spend artistic residency for weeks with them. So I think that's very positive. Very positive indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lila. You want to add to that or? Yeah, I think Basel already uh, uh, said uh, what needs to be said. Uh, in another personal level, like sharing this uh, uh, this idea of the play between even uh, friends and family, uh, especially friends coming from different backgrounds, uh, and um, uh, working with uh, either friends working with refugees on a daily basis, and even not, uh, everyone welcomed the idea and said that that would even help the people working with refugees to know more their struggles and to know more how they should uh, communicate and work with them, uh, and it will even help with both sides uh, to understand each other, the the refugees and the people who are really helping and active in helping refugees. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Amanda and Anthony. Yes, uh, you know, uh, in our uh, creation, uh, it was very particular because in each stage uh, we had uh, some public uh, presentations and uh, people, uh, you know, was uh, invited to discuss with us. Also, we do a lot of uh, cultural mediation. So uh, always we have always uh, migrants, refugees, asylum seekers and civil society actors present also to share their point of view. And I need to say that uh, their point of view, their feedbacks about what they are seeing was very important for the project and helped to shape all the creation and, and it was continuously and was very interesting to have this uh, their participation actually in our way to create. Uh, I think uh, because of uh, this dimension it was very welcome people was very very happy to see uh, to, to see uh, our work and take part also do workshops with us and uh, spend time to discuss, to share. Um, and uh, yes, sometimes, of course, we had some uh, persons that uh, came to see, they, they had some, uh, some uh, very sceptical, I can say, or very stereotype uh, um, way to see migra migrants and migration. So in, in that sense, sometimes you have some um, this interesting in discussion uh, with uh, with that people, but uh, the most part of people came to to, this, to the theater uh, to 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 see this uh, and to 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 share their point of views are very interested about migration also. So uh, they they were yes very very um, happy to see also this uh, kind of um, of creation because we we work with uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, dance and body so uh, and acrobatics so it's a very dynamic uh, show uh, and that uh, this this uh, kind of aesthetic experience uh, make people you know um, 
produce uh, some uh, emotional, the strong emotions uh, to people. And uh, you want yeah, what I remember about uh, the audience is, of course, standing ovation, uh, people that are happy, but people that cry too, especially uh, migrants of second or third generation uh, that are touched in inside of, of them hurt. Um, what is re really particular, it's because we, we never do just the show. We, we play and we, we were offered some mediation, cultural media, mediation. Um, and what touched me in, inside of this project, it's because you, you could be an adult, a child or an old person, migrant or not, second or, or, or third generation. Every person uh, felt something. Every person learned something. When we are with with child, you can talk about migration, and they will think about respect or comment dire altérité of, of the other. Uh, of the other. Mm -hmm. So if you are with adults, they are talking about. Um, uh, people that they don't know their cultures or yeah there, there is a lot a lot of type of person of type of emotion and I think that was a, a really important project uh, for French culture. So. so you had a mixed audience basically for your show. Yeah. 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 Okay. What I found interesting is the question of representation, of course, because you both mentioned this problem of representing a group of people, especially, of course, in your case, Amanda and Anthony, this is a, is a special problem of you had to deal with and you explained that quite well. How, if I can get the four of you in communication, how, what do you feel about the others? Do you have questions regarding how they dealt with these, this issue? Did, did you, I mean, did you feel that this is a good way of dealing with um, um, being refugees yourself? Is this a good way of dealing with um, refugees' experiences or the other way around? What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I, um, I want to say that when you're um, feeling that or when, when you are yourself come, uh, an immigrant or refugee, of course, it's a bit uh, easier to understand because you're living that struggle every day. Uh, like in every every procedure that you do, uh, going into the bus, buying something from the supermarket, or you, you see it in your daily life. So we kind of understand what other uh, are going through. But again, I want to say that this is not, uh, uh, for each individual, it's a unique experience. So what I went through, Basel didn't go through, uh, or, or any, other, uh, any other person. And this is goes back to uh, saying that we are a diverse team in the play. Each of us comes from a different uh, background and then comes to this new, um, new society. And each of us shared their own experience and uh, learning from all of these, we were able to, to integrate and sum up these patterns or what are the daily struggles that, uh, uh, that, they would, uh, that we would face as immigrants. And I would uh, um, ask this uh, question also to Amanda and Anthony. I mean, how do you feel your, um, uh, your le level of really understanding or connecting with people having this, uh, this experience? Were you able to understand every little uh, detail or kind of put yourself in their position? What's your process to understand them more? I mean, that's an interesting uh, topic for me to, to listen from you. Uh, if, I, if I can just quickly comment on what you said, Leila, before Amanda. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, Feeling be, or being uh, being a refugee is, is, is not is, is not as easy to express yourself or to put it uh, out in art as you think. Sometimes you are too much inside inside the uh, the experience that we, we 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 feel too much inside. We don't see the reality. We disconnect from the other. We don't feel how the other using the other. Um, 
yes, we live the experience, but do we have the uh, emotional and cognitive ability to express this experience? Uh, there is a huge difference between living and knowing. So uh, sorry to interrupt the, the fluidity of the discussion now. Please, Amanda. No, thank you. That was a very good point. Thanks for bringing that in. I give a hand over to Amanda and Anthony. Yes, uh, I need to agree with uh, with Basel, of course, uh, and also with Leila. We, we have a different, uh, multiple uh, ways to think, to feel migration. I am also migration, a migrant myself. So uh, my, but I am not living in the same way than, uh, you know, others. This is uh, also migration is an individual experience. Of course, you have individual projects, uh, whatever, and. Uh, what um, about about uh, understand the, the the experience you are trying to talk about or to discuss by arts in the, in the camps of Calais? Uh, first, the methods. It was uh, just uh, too precise for Leila. Uh, to, we do really immersion in the in the in the camps. It's mean that we spend. A, a lot of time, two months, <laughs> two months uh, non without uh, get out of Calais. Huh? We stay there two months, uh, living with, yes, living that uh, experience with them, uh, living in the camps. And uh, the most important, it was uh, really, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, develop a kind of connection with people, you know, that uh, uh, meet. We are not meeting migrants living in the camps. We are meeting people, you know. Uh, I remember always the history of Assam. Assam is somebody that you met there, became a friend, you know. Some somebody that you can uh, create some ties, you know. Because not because it's a migrant, because it's Assam, because uh, you know. Uh, he uh, had, he's a person, he's an individual. So the idea was being in contact with individuals, not with migrants, about understand their situation. I need to say we had a lot in the camps, we had a lot of different situations, a lot. We can't just put a name in that situation or something. No, people are very different. They have a diverse uh, and a very complex uh, migration uh, projects. They had uh, their own uh, background, their own positionality also. So uh, what you do um, in, in that uh, creation with artists it was it's because of this that I uh, and, and assist in the, the reflection and uh, and also the, their positionality really uh, as as uh, artists but also as uh, individual just meet another individual and share something. So it was much more about it uh, than uh, try to understand to meet people to find a, a way to connect with them. And uh, then uh, understand migration at, uh, you know, something bigger than it. The, the situation in Cali is very complex and uh, we can talk about people living in the camps. We can talk about people that you met and that are living in that camp. We can do this, but you can't go to, to, to the stage and try to represent there. It, for us, it will, it will not be fair, you don't do it. Uh, we can say we met and it was, uh, we under, uh, this, this connection provoked this in us, you know, not uh, yeah, trying to uh, repeat their words or doing, try to doing like them. But for us, we are not able to do it. No, no way. So I don't know if I, you want to meet you. Yeah, ju just precise that um, we, we are, we are, I don't say how to explain it, we are, we are feeling really that, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's personal life and we need to, to speak about persons that we met concretely and we need to dance thinking about this person. 
And, and the time was very uh, concentrated. All the day in the camp, the night, uh, every person tried to pass or are going to sleep. And we needed to converse or to express something in the theater. Or, uh, so the, the approach uh, for me, like an artist, it's just uh, to understand person, to be empathic uh, with what he said to me or to us and not interfered with uh, their life, but just be there, uh, give my head and try to speak because they don't have uh, access to medias or to theater or to, to other person of the society of the town or, yeah. Yeah, I, I hope we... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I think that was very interesting. I thank all speakers for these very these very interesting presentations of these projects that are also great. And I um, also like to thank the audience for watching um, this um, present these presentations. And I hope you will stay tuned for other interesting programs that will be following in this Global Migrant Festival. Thank you very much. Bye.